Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I wanted to prove this very important theorem, which is needed in cryptography, especially in public key cryptography. Suppose you are given an integer x greater than one, there are only two possibilities. Either the number itself is prime, the integer x itself is prime, or it contains a prime factor bounded by square root of x, okay? Which is important because suppose you would like to uh, test whether a number is prime or not, um, you don't have to go more than square root of x, okay? If x is say, for example, 10 power six or something close to 10 power six, uh, we don't have to try all uh, 10 power six by two possibilities. Uh, we can only try 10 power six square root, which is 10 power three. So, you, so significantly faster than trying half of the elements, right? So that's basically the core idea of this theorem, okay? It can still be large for large x, but um, this is an important theorem we need to be aware of in cryptography, okay? So um, how do we prove this theorem? Okay, um, so let's assume that um, we have a small factor of p, okay? p is a small prime factor, let's assume. Uh, p is the smallest prime factor of x, okay? I'm going to um, assume this is the smallest prime factor. So uh, let's assume now that the x is a composite number, okay? So what does it mean? It means that we can write x as product of um, two numbers at least, okay? We can always write uh, x as a dot b, okay? We, we talked about this in the previous segment. Any, any number, any composite number in particular can be re represented as product of um, other numbers, okay? Of course, a and b are bounded by um, x. Okay, this is this is something we talked about earlier. And now let's think about the fact that p is the smallest prime factor. Okay, that tells us that our a must be uh, greater than or equal to p, and b must also be uh, greater than or equal to p. Okay, because we assumed p being the smallest uh, prime factor of x. Okay, all right. That that this comes directly from our assumption that p is the smallest uh, fact, prime factor. Okay. Uh, of x. So um, how do we now proceed further now to, to show that um, the, the smallest uh, factor of the number x is bounded by square root of x. Okay, now let's multiply uh, these two things. When is a greater than or equal to b, b, uh, b greater than or equal to p, what can we say? Um, we can say a times b must be greater than or equal to p square. Okay, what is, um, what is a times b? a times b is nothing but x. So that's that's the assumption here. So x is greater than or equal to p square, okay? Which means um, p square, which is equal to saying p square is less than or equal to x, which means um, p is less than or equal to square root of x, okay? Since p is a prime number, we don't have to worry about the negative root, okay? So uh, negative of the uh, root square root of x is not necessary. So we have proved here that, that the smallest prime factor of x has to be um, bounded by square root of x, which is very nice because suppose I, I am asked to test whether a number say n is equal to 121 is a prime or not. I, I have to only test whether, uh, is there anything that divides um, n all the way from um, two, two through one always divides. So to, from two until 11. Okay, and of course I see 11 divides 121, so I can stop. I don't have to go to 60 something, okay? So that's the, the benefit of this, this important theorem. But if X is a very, very large number, say X is a number close to uh, 2 power 20, 48, then your square root of X is um, still a very, very large number. It will be approximately 2 power 1000, okay? If this is approximately close to 20, 48, then this is going to be approximately close to uh, 2 power 1024, which is enormous, okay, still enormous. Um, that, that's the important fact that we will revisit during RSA in particular and, and talk about that in more detail. But for, from a mathematical perspective, um, it is clear now that any number X, either it is prime or must contain a prime factor less than or equal to square root of X. That's exactly what we proved, okay? This A and B need not be primes. You remember here, I wrote it as product of uh, two numbers. Um, suppose the, the number X has only two prime factors, then of course A and B will be primes. If, the, if the, there are more than two factors, you can always multiply two of the prime factors to make one number A, and then leave the, the smallest number to be B, okay? That, that's how we can bring more than uh, two numbers into just two numbers, like the way I wrote it here, okay? All right, and now we can then make use of the fact that P is the smallest prime factor of X. And we proved that uh, since P is the smallest prime factor of X, A must be greater than or equal to P, uh, B must be greater than or equal to P. And therefore we can conclude P is bounded by square root of X. Okay, that's all, thank you very much.